Hello guys, now in this small video, let's integrate the GI hormones with the pharma. Okay, we are correlating pharma and GI hormones. See guys, now whenever you eat food, whenever you eat food, your GIT, the wall of the GIT in specific, okay, the wall of the GIT is going to produce certain chemicals. Now what are these chemicals? Something like GLP, glucagon-like peptide, gastric inhibitory peptide. So, glucagon-like peptide, gastric inhibitory peptide, these are the ones which are coming from the wall of the GIT. And these substances are called as incretins. These incretin molecules, they will act on pancreas. Okay, they will come, they will act on pancreas and increases the secretion of insulin. So, it's very logic, right? Whenever you eat food, digestion will happen. Glucose is going to be released. Now, that glucose will come into the blood. So, your body should have to be pre-prepared so that whenever there is a insulin, whenever there is, sorry, whenever there is increased glucose, that glucose need to be transported into the tissues. For that, whom do you need? Insulin is needed. So, even before food is digested or when the food is getting digested, the JT wall releases chemicals. These chemicals will go to the pancreas, tell the pancreas that food is coming glucose is going to come into the blood so you be prepared so pancreas is going to release the insulin now how do we use this concept or how do we use these gi hormones to treat diabetes mellitus how means see guys for example imagine the condition we are taking is diabetes mellitus now, in the condition of diabetes mellitus, what is the problem? The problem is there is a decrease insulin. Now, we know one way to increase the insulin release. One way. What is that? If you can use these kind of drugs, incretin analogs, if you can use drugs like GLP and G, uh, GLP and GIP, now those drugs can also act on the pancreas and increases the release of insulin. So, that what will happen? blood levels of glucose will go down in diabetes mellitus. So, the drugs which are like incretin, like incretin are incretin analog kind of drugs, GLP-1 analogs which are very much famous. So, glucagon like peptide 1 which is an incretin. So, analog means like drugs. So, GLP-1 analogs are exenatide and deraglutide. These drugs are used in treatment of diabetes Mellitus. I want you to know one more important point. Now, this incretin analogs, these drugs are having a side effect of pancreatitis. Okay. So, side effect of the side effect is the pancreatitis. Now, let's discuss about mutilin. So, what is this mutilin and from where it is produced and how we can uh, correlate this J hormone mutilin with pharmacology? Guys, this motilin is produced from M0 cells or MO cells. Okay, so M0 cells are the ones which are producing the motilin and what it is doing, in the name itself it is there, motilin. Okay, so movement of the JET, so increases the gastric and intestinal motility. So, motilin coming from M0 cells, what it will do? It will increase the GI motility. Okay, sir. Now, see this motilin receptors can be stimulated by a drug called as erythromycin. What exactly is erythromycin? Thromycins. Thromycins are macrolides. Okay. So, your erythromycin can act on the GIT and it can stimulate the motilin receptor. Guys, don't confuse. Yes, erythromycin, I know. It is a macrolide. Antibacterial drug. But, it's having a side effect. Okay, what is that? This erythromycin can stimulate motilin receptors. So, the side effect of erythromycin is diarrhea. So, this is a side effect why? because it is increasing the J motility. But we can use this erythromycin in certain conditions like gastric paralysis or paralytic ileus. Okay. Now, just tell me guys, in these two conditions, gastric paralysis or simple gastric paralysis, try to understand like this. The GIT motility is not there. Paralytic ileus, okay, contractions are not happening. 
Now, why it can happen? For example, imagine that there was this one patient who is undergoing some gastric surgery. Okay, some uh, gastric surgery is being happened. During that surgery, the nerve plexus got little damaged. The neurons get little damaged so that now there is no GI motility. Now, as a doctor, what you have to do? Again, you have to bring back the GI motility. We know erythromycin is kind of a drug. It can stimulate the motilin receptors and increases the J motility. So, in the conditions like gastric paralysis and paralytic ileus, we want the J motility to come back. So, what kind of drugs can help us? Erythromycin will come into handy during these conditions. Now, let's talk about this J hormone which is called as ghrelin. Now, what exactly is this ghrelin and when it is produced? See, ghrelin is produced in the body during fasting. Okay, so during fasting states, ghrelin is getting produced. Now, just think logically and tell me, during fasting, ghrelin is getting produced. So, what might be the function of this ghrelin? To increase the blood glucose levels. Blood glucose levels, ghrelin increases the blood glucose levels. Okay, so, what, uh, how? How? By increasing the hunger. So, whenever ghrelin is getting produced in your body, you will have a feeling of hunger. You will take the food. So, whenever you take the food, what do you need? You need a gastric acid. So, what this ghrelin is doing is, it will increase the insulins, insulin release, it will increase the insulin release, growth hormone release, gastric acid release, everything is going to be increased. Okay. Now, what happened to J motility? It's activating the J system. So, J motility is also increased. Okay. So, one important MCQ which you, you, sh you should never forget is, ghrelin is a hormone which is especially produced during fasting. This is the most important MCQ. Now, let's talk about a cell called as M cell. Okay. Uh, this was an integration with uh, a patho. Now, I just want you to remember this. So, what are these M cells and where they are present? Guys, right now I am showing you small intestine. Now, in the small intestinal wall, are you able to appreciate this cell, this blue color cell which is written as M cell. M cell is also called as microfold cell. Okay. Microfold cell. Now, what is the importance of this M cell? This M cell is acting as antigen presenting cell. Okay. Anti gen presenting cell antigen presenting cell so who is the antigen presenting cell in the small intestine it's the m cell cell okay one important mcq i want you to remember okay guys i have uh, made a little integrations from j physiology with other subjects hope the video is helpful thank you